This is the plaintiff, Anna Nowak. She says the defendant stole her late husband's wave runner out of a storage unit and claims her husband gave it to him before he passed away. She knows for a fact he wanted their children to have the wave runner. She told that to the defendant who has ignored her, and today is judgment day. That's right, she's suing the guy for the $2,240 she's owed because what he did was wrong, and he knows it. This is the defendant, Steve McNamara. He says he used to work for the plaintiff's husband, and he offered the wave runner as partial payment for a landscaping job he did for him. He got a bill of sale and the registration, and now four years later, the lady is suing him for it? Please. This whole thing's crazy. He's in the right, and he can prove it. He's accused of stealing from a family. Uh, all parties, please raise your right hand. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're okay, Anna Nowak? Yes. You are suing Stephen McNamara? Yes. For $2,240, the depreciated value of a 1997 Yamaha Wave Runner? Okay, yes. what happened? My husband was the owner of a business in Newtown, Connecticut. He passed away, uh, he died of cancer in 2012. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, we had what been month of 2012? In June. Okay. Um, we had been um, storing a 1997 Yamaha Wave Runner and trailer at his warehouse in Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, there was more room, ample room there. We didn't have the room to store it at our home, at our residence. Um, we had repeated conversations that the Wave Runner was for my children's enjoyment. It was our property. Um, <clears throat> in 2015, I had you owned it um, since 1997, or you'd bought it used? I believe my husband bought it. I, you know, I can't answer that. Was question. it registered under his name, or under your name, or under his your children's name. name? His name. His name. Okay. Yes. Um, in 2015, I went to go um, see the Wave Runner in Newtown, and I noticed that it was gone. This is three years after your husband passed away. Correct. Okay. And um, I. Um, questioned uh, Mr. McNamara if he knew about the, the whereabouts of the wave runner. Why Mr. McNamara? What does he have to do with any of this? Um, I just had that feeling. <laughs> no, but he, is, was he an employee of your husband's? Yes. Was he a friend of your husband's? Yes, what, he what was is? an employee of my husband's. I okay. introduced him to my husband. We went to high school together. I got Who him the job. Who went to high school together? You two? We did. Okay. Um, I um, introduced him to my husband before my husband got ill. He hired him at his company. How long had he been with the company? Before your husband passed away, do you know? Um, I'm not exactly sure what year he was hired. All right. What year were you hired? Uh, June of 2010, Your Honor. 2010. So, and your husband passed away in 2012. 2012. All right. And was your husband sick in 2010 or no? Um, it was the beginning of his cancer. Yeah. Yes. And uh, did the business continue after your husband passed? Yes, it's Who still. Who continued to run it? Uh, my brother-in-law. Okay. So go on. Um, in 2015, I had um, confronted Steve McNamara about the Wave Runner. He said that uh, he said that my husband said that he could have it, and my husband and I had repeated conversations that that Wave Runner was for my children. I never had conversations regarding Mr. McNamara. Um, um, getting and having any rights to our property, to the Wave Runner. Um, after that, I had sent certified letters to Mr. McNamara requesting um, that we would like our Wave Runner back. Um, I believe you have copies. All I that have. started in what year? Uh, March 2015. Um, May I see those letters? Yes. Who is the gentleman with you? Uh, that's my attorney, Terry Gallagher. Oh. Sitting quietly in the corner, as <laughs> attorneys must in these proceedings. <laughs> okay, so on March 4th, you send him a letter saying, I expect you to return my personal property that you took from the premises, specifically my 1997 Yamaha jet ski and great 2006 trailer. These items belong to me. I expect you to return the jet ski and trailer within 30 days, and if you fail to do so, I will file a stolen property report. He writes back... The jet ski and trailer were given to me for payment of services and supplies for work that I did for Ken, and then he gives an address he did the work at. What is that? That's where we live. That's my residence. Okay, this payment agreement was decided by Ken in May of 2012 because for some reason he didn't want the kids to have it. I have three people that witnessed this agreement. Who are the three people? Are they here? 
No, they are not. They're who co-workers. Are the three people? They were co-workers. At Did you this. ever tell her who the three people were? She'd know the no. co-workers. Why not? Who are they? Tell me now. One was Steve Melcher. Uh, the other one was Gene Cease and uh, Sean Kaplan. Okay, now Steve Melcher yeah. is someone who you subsequently sold this to, right? He approached me about purchasing it in 2015. Okay. I am sorry that Ken never told you of these dealings, but it was his choice to offer the jet ski for payment. I was given a bill of sale and titles for both the jet ski and the trailer. This was done in accordance with the law. You wrote a note here on his letter to you that says he never showed me the bills. Have you ever seen it up to this date? No, you're right. Now, Honor. you ended up calling the police, correct? Yes, I have a police report. Right. Uh, the they confirmed that, in fact, it was legally registered to McNamara until December of 2014. What happened in December of 2014? That's when I sold it to Steve Melcher. Okay. And then the did he register it in his name? Yes, in Connecticut. Okay. You had registered it in your name where? In New Hampshire. Because Why? I had a house up in New Hampshire at the time. Okay. And according to them, that can only be done with a bill of sale. And in fact, the a check of the New Hampshire website showed a bill of sale. The, the, that's what the police report says, though. So I have to imagine the police spoke with you. They didn't investigate the case you asked them to investigate and then never call you. Did they not tell you this? You're looking at the police report, so I know you've seen it. Um, they uh, informed me that it was now a civil matter and that he didn't have evidence to indicate the vessel was stolen. Well, not only that, he has evidence to indicate the vessel wasn't stolen. That's why they're not filing a criminal case. I mean, um, all right, so do you have a bill of sale from her husband? Is that something that you printed off the website? No, I went to New Hampshire and I got a copy of it, and I also have a copy of the verified registration that I had it registered, stamped. What kind of work did you do around that house that this was? Landscaping. Landscaping and excavation work. They were building a pool down in their backyard and re-landscaping their front yard, irrigation systems, and like that. So and why I, did, he, did, he, did he sell it to you, or he gave it to you in lieu of, of a payment? He, I gave him $500. That's what he wanted at the time, and cash, and it took for the for the wave runner for the wave runner and two thousand dollars. I took off the outstanding bill. Okay, so do you have any proof that you gave him the five hundred? It's cash. That's how we worked. Are you saying that because the register no, because the thing no. says sale price five hundred? No, we we he which of course to bring the taxes down if it wasn't two thousand. Is that yeah. why you're saying that selling no. price five hundred? Nope. Stephen H. Okay, so this purports to be the seller's signature on the bottom, Mr. Nowak's, right? Correct. Let me show it to you. Take a look at that. I would imagine, how many years were you married to him? 17. Okay. Does that look like his signature? No, it does not. Do you have anything with his signature to prove that? Yes, I do. Okay. What is that? This is um, a signature that was on our will. Is it an original or is it a photocopy? That's a copy. I don't take copies, especially not on a signature, because people can just put something on top of something, and then I don't get a chance to actually this see what it is. This is an original. Is. I do have an original. You have an original? Good. Mm -hmm. right there. Okay. Thank you. This is who? Your husband? Yes. How old was your husband? He, when he died, uh, I'm sorry, when he passed away, he was about 52. Oh, honey. He looks 22. <sighs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, well, that's kind of because this is a picture from when he was 22. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a real signature. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I say, why, well, he looks like a baby. Well, of course, he was a baby then. All right, all right, I got it, I got it. How would he get the title to it? The title? Yeah. Um, Mr. McNamara had an office, um, and he had access to um, folders, files. Um, the Wave Runner was taken, and all the important papers were in it. So he basically beat me to it. Do you have anything in your husband's handwriting? Um, I have you this. You made a comment earlier that uh, I suspected it would be him. Why did you suspect anything? Um, 
Mr. McNamara had done um, work at our on our property, uh, like he had mentioned before, and um, there were so many things that I had to take care of after my husband died. There were medical bills beyond. And there were just um, um, repeated invoices coming from Steve McNamara for the work that he had done. There was like, you know, no, re you know, no break, no break and pay me, pay me, pay me, you owe me, pass due. Um, so I had to really just kind of get my bearings. Right, but are you suggesting that when you say no break? Um, he wanted his money. And I feel that he didn't get paid soon enough, I feel that he decided that he was going to take the wave runner as collateral. Right, but do you have proof of anything that you're saying? You proof of saying? anything? Yeah, of the things that you're saying. You're saying, I believe that this is what happened. He stole it because he wanted to get paid, and he get paid fast enough. I'm not sure what you're saying. Did you owe him money um, for he, work? Did he, you end up paying him that money? Yes, Your okay. Honor. So, and how soon or how late did you pay him that money? Um, he was paid um, probably in full he was paid in full probably about a year and a half after uh, my husband died. Okay, I'm not sure that someone billing you during the course of a year and a half is pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me, and your husband just died. A year and a half is a lot, is very late to be paying somebody for work they did. You know, and I realized and, you know, that you had to sort things out and figure things out. And, um, but every time your husband signs, he signs differently. Like, you're telling me, well, this signature is very different, Judge, from the one on the will. It's not very different. It's kind, it has some differences. But then the one on the check has differences from the one on the will, too. He's a scribbler, um, like two of my children. He had a certain way of sign. signing his case. He does, but the one on the will is very different from the one here, and it's also different from the one here, if you look at them. Have you, you've, I assume that before you walked in here, you looked at them and you noticed. Yes. Yeah. Because you hadn't even seen this, and you were saying, that's not his signature. I'm, I'm not having that kind of ease that you're having. I mean, I handed it to you. You said, that's not his signature before you. If you've never seen this, I would imagine you want to inspect it to see if that was his signature. I knew right away it wasn't his signature. Yeah. Did you bring any of the witnesses here who you say, no, you say I, I have three witnesses? Why would you take the opportunity to have them at least give you statements when you walked into court today? I came here knowing that I had a signed bill of sale. It was a legal transaction. Now, Melcher bought it from you? Correct. What did he pay for it? He paid $1,500. And Melcher has it now? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. But that was, right. that was let's see, 15? Now you're talking 2015. three years ago. Did Melcher ever talk to the police? Yes, he talked to the Newtown police when they came to All right, our so the office. Newtown police gets this in 2015. Did you know, how do I pronounce his name, Melcher? Melcher. Did you know him? I did not, but okay. I did speak to him. And so he, and he was an employee also? Correct. And you spoke, you say you spoke to him. When did you speak to I him? I spoke when, to him last year. When you got year. the police report? I spoke to him last year uh -huh. to follow up with this. I wasn't going to let it go. And he said that he had no idea that any of this was going on. And I said, um, do you know that, you know, it's um, stolen property? And he's like, I had no idea. And he goes, well, if you want it back. How are you going to disprove this, what he's saying? How, how, how to disprove it for me? Give me something to hang my hat on. How are you going to do it? And welcome back to the People's Court. Question, um, I don't understand this. If the guy registers title and then writes up a bill of sale, that's not something a thief would do, is it? It's just a way to clear title and put the thing under his name. It makes a lot of sense. Except then he's putting his name out there. If he's a thief, why would a thief do that? Because he's trying to hide something. But if he's trying to hide something, why is he putting his name on it? Yeah, I don't think he's completely honest. I think he's, it's illegal. He's putting his name on it and trying to sell it. Really? Okay, I guess I'm a minority of one here going inside the courtroom. You have to prove to me that it is more likely than not stolen. He's got a bill of sale. Mm -hmm. We've got a signature that, that mm -hmm. goes a lot of different ways a lot of different times. Mm -hmm. He's got the title. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can suspect everything you want. Okay. But, and then I've got, I've got Melcher telling the police, hold on one second. No ex stated she did not know who Melcher was. So then the police, I mean, they thoroughly, invest, they, they did everything they needed to do. I traveled to environmental and spoke with two males identified as Stephen McNamara and Stephen Melcher. McNamara stated as Kenneth Nowak was getting memorial from cancer to McNamara, he could have the 1997 Yamaha Jeskin in question for payment as services. Kenneth owed 
McNamara, who was his employee. So you're still working there three years after this. The Correct. brother-in-law didn't fire you? No. Okay. McNamara, did you stay working after that? Also, when are you still working there now? No, no. Okay, when did you stop? 2016. 16. Um, yes. So he didn't fire you when she complained to the police about the waiver on no, the thing? No, no. McNamara stated that Yamaha and trailer were signed over to him prior to Kenneth's death a few years ago and were legally registered with a bill of sale in his name at his residence in New Hampshire, that he wasn't getting enough use out of it, so he signed it over to Melcher a few months ago, and that the DMV had his documentation. The officer then contacted the DMV in New Hampshire, and they corroborated all of this. Yeah. May I speak? You can. Okay. I was married 17 years. My husband never had that conversation with me that that wave runner was to be his property. It was for my children. They had memories. Before he died, they had fun with their father, and that was the intention of that wave runner. How long had it been that that wave runner wasn't used? Because you didn't even notice it missing for three years. 2012, he passed away. 2015, I tried to get it back. Right. How long before 2012 had it been since the wave runner had been used? Um, we were on that wave runner before my husband died. How long the summer. before? It was probably... Your husband died in June in of that summer. June, so yes. how long before that? The prior summer? No. That summer. He we was were on a wave runner? Sick? Yes, he was. Yep. He was. I'm very sorry over what happened to you. Mm -hmm. But you having the burden of proof coming in here, there being a bill of sale, there being a... You know, I expect a thief to just take it and shut up. I don't expect a thief to register it put a bill of sale with a signature out there, um, and then sell it to someone else and have all that paperwork, and that's not what a thief does. What a thief does is take it and say, I don't know what you're talking about. That's what a thief does. And none of that happened here. And you're the one with the burden of proof coming in, and you just haven't proven it to me. So my hands are tied on this. My verdict in this case is for him. I know you're saying you won't let it go. You've attached this great significance to the wave runner. You're a parent. You love your children. You want a safer wave runner. Treat yourself. Get yourself a new wave runner. Make new memories on a wave runner that has safety mechanisms on it, not a 1997. Right? Do that. Do that. that that's a much better tribute to the memories that your kids have with your husband on that. Okay? Good luck to you. My verdict's for the defendant. So the judge says Ms. Nowak did not have the evidence to prove her case. What, what are you thinking right now? I think everybody feels really sorry for you. But. Um, I um, have a lot of mixed feelings right now because I know the truth. Um, but I think what was good was to be able to expose Mr. McNamara. And um, a lot of people know that I was coming here today. And they were all, um, um, you know, hoping that it would work out in my favor. Um, but he again, had, you say to expose him. He had he had evidence that the judge could look at. You know what? I I am grateful that I had the opportunity to do this. Um, Did your lawyer? You brought a lawyer to court with you. Did he give you any idea that this might happen? Um, I, I, well, we were realistic. Yeah, we were realistic. You know, there's always someone that wins and always someone that, that Let doesn't. me ask you. You don't want to talk? All right. The lawyer doesn't want to talk. I mean, it, it would seem to me he might know. Okay. I'm so sorry for you. That's okay. okay. That's all right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. All right, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, Mr. McNamara. How you doing? She said you were exposed. I, I didn't get that. I don't get that either. Yeah. yeah. I don't get that either. It was a legal transaction. Um, I, I did work with her husband. Her husband was a great guy and everything, and it's a sad passing. But, you know, what was right is right. It's legal. And it was okay. done legal, and I'm uh, hiding from it. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. You're Thank very, you. very welcome. Hope this is over. That's a pretty fascinating case, Harvey. What do you think? Well, Doug, I got to say, this is a really sad case. And notice that the judgment came with a dose of humanity because the plaintiff here clearly is really suffering, uh, and she lost.